Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. Today we'll be looking at how to create a parametric grooved bolt. We'll be using the set blind to complete this task. So we have started a new generic family and as, and as always we are setting up the reference planes first, our skeleton. The ref planes in the front view will not constrain anything but with more of a guide for setting up the swept blind. Then we add the dimension lines the muscles for our grooved bolt. It's not that many for this family, clean and simple. Next up is the brain of the family and, it's, and it is the parameter that is created in the family type box. We will need the material and the diameter. We also add a radius which is a formula based on the diam diameter input value. We place this parameter in the other category since it will not be a user defined parameter rather the numerical value will be at the mercy of the diameter value and that is done with a simple formula diameter divided by 2 we do a quick test to see if the rod radius respond as intended all right all good we quickly associate the dimension line with the rod diameter parameter let's proceed with the final step the skin setting up the geometry. We will be using the swept blend tool. The swept blend tool allows you to create a blend that has two different profiles and then sweep it along a path. The shape of a swept blend is determined by the 2D path you either sketch or pick and the two profiles you either sketch or load. In our case the two profiles are identical but they end at different height to create the grooved look we are looking for. We just sketch the profile, but we could create a 2D parametric profile. But since the profile will be static, with no changes, we will opt to just sketch it. Completing the second profile in a slightly elevated position to achieve the desired grooved appearance, we switch to a 3D view to connect the geometry material with a parameter material and to observe how the sweat blend reacts to a variation in the rod diameter. And it looks good. So the reason we connect it is that we desire the grooved bolt to be parametric. So this process is currently applied to just one side. We replicate it on the opposite side to create the optical illusion of grooves or what is called spirals encircling the smooth rod. Utilizing the sweat blend tool once again, sketch out the path and link it to our diameter or the radius which is a formula based on our rod diameter. We proceed to draft the two profiles, profile 1 and 2. It's crucial to initiate the profile where the first one ends. Let's hit OK and finalizing the geometry. So we go to the 3D view and examine preliminary result. You'll notice the completion of the one full revolution with this profile. This piece of geometry will be the component of a larger array in the hosted family. Before saving it and loading it into the host family, make sure to delete all the materials and purge the family. Basically delete everything you don't use and make the file smaller and more manageable. When that is done, we save it to our local desktop as rod part. So next, we create another part for our grooved rod, the inner smooth rod or the bolt. This will also be a nested family to the host family. We proceed by creating the reference planes and setting up the parameters.
Our two nested components have now been created. Let's put it all together and create another new family, which will be the host family for the two nested components. But first, let's clean up the open windows. I don't like to have too many of them open. I like to keep it nice and tidy. Then we load the two components into the host family. When we are loaded it into the host family, we go to the family type box and set up our parameters. The parameters here will be diameter, material, array number. So the array number parameter, this is uh, this parameter will not be user defined, but it will be based on the total length of the user defined length. A formula will be created to calculate the number of arrays based on the length. And of course, we need a length, which will be decided by the end user. We put in some uh, numerical values for the diameter and length. We need to do that so the nested families don't break when associating the hosted parameters to the nested parameters. We go to the project browser find our nested families and start to connect them to the host family. This is a crucial step giving the end user access and control over the parameters in the nested families when loading the host family into the main Revit project. We connect up the last parameters and that is done. We then drag the rod component out in our plan view and start aligning it to our reference planes. We do want to align it to the center. We also align the rod in elevation in the front view. So next we drag out the road rod part, the one full circle grooved part to the plan view. We don't align it quite yet. Firstly, we array it. And we do that in the front view. We also set up the reference planes. The first reference planes will align to the center of the rod part. And the second will also align to the second component of the array. So remember, the important part here is we want a fixed spacing. So no user defined spacing. Actually, we want no spacing between the components. The user defined length will be the parameter that determine how many arrays there will be. A great tip is to always, when working with arrays, to use the nested components, since it's much easier to control a rather complex geometry as a whole, like the one we just created, the road part. We start aligning the first and second components in the array. Importantly, it is the number two component in the relation to the first component that sets the tone for the rest of the components in the array. So when we start to put the parameters on the number one and two components, it will decide everything about the array. So now we have aligned the components both in elevation and in plan view. So let's set up the formula for numbers of array. It's pretty basic. It's length divided by three. Why three? We divide it by three because that is the height of the rod component, meaning there will be no spacing in the array. Our grood rod is complete. Let's delete materials and purge it before loading it into the main project for a little flexing. And yeah, that concludes this tutorial on a grooved bolt. Be sure to like and subscribe for more fun videos.